Welcome viewers, my name is Nick and welcome back to another TV Box Top Review. Today I feature another new product from Mikul and this one is called the Mikul KD1 Android TV Stick. This new TV Stick is Google certified with Google Assistant's feature and built-in Chromecast. It comes with the required DRM protection to stream premium services such as Disney Plus in HD and 4K. This TV stick is surprisingly more powerful than lots of TV boxes, with DDR4 RAM and Vulkan support running on Android 10 tvOS. So up next, I have my full review with live demonstrations and let's see what the Mikul KD1 has to offer. So stay tuned, that's up next. Welcome back. In the box, you have the KD1 TV stick itself. You get one wireless voice remote with Google Assistant's feature, one micro USB charging cable with a built-in IR receiver, you get a 5V power adapter, and a user manual. The body of the TV stick itself is made of plastic with an LED power light a reset button and a micro USB charging port, and that's it. There are no USB ports or micro SD card slots. So I'll set this up on my 4K TV and capture card and continue. The KD1 runs on Android TV OS, so when you start for the first time, you will first have to pair the wireless voice remote to the stick, then complete the startup wizard by connecting to your network and logging into your Google account. Then you will be presented with the option to choose from a list of apps you would like to pre-install and then you are taken to the launcher. So here we are at the launcher. And before I proceed, I would like to point out that the issue of having HDR display on by default also exists on this stick. So if you have a TV, that does not have HDR display, then you may not get a picture. What's different is that in the settings area, you have the option to configure the HDR display. However, when you attempt to make any changes, they do not work and the HDR feature remains on even after you restart the stick. So during this video, if the display appears a bit saturated or the brightness seems a bit off at times, then it's due to the HDR feature having issues with my capture card. So the Mikul KD1 runs on Android 10 TV OS as you can see here in the About section under Device Preferences and this here is the firmware build information. Features include 4K display up to 2160p at 60Hz. You have HDR display settings. You have a screen rotation switch. You have HDMI CEC options. You have built-in Chromecast and Google Assistant's feature. And you have digital surround sound audio options. This is Android TV OS, so you don't get a root switch, navigation bar or status bar, built-in screen rotation, hardware monitor or Samba server settings. If you open the app section, here you will see all the apps pre-installed that you selected during the startup wizard. So I'll install some additional ones that will give me its system and hardware information and also its benchmarks and then I'll move on to its streaming and live demonstrations. So I've installed all my apps and it's time to reveal its system and hardware information. The app shows that it's running on 2GB of RAM and this is LPDDR4 memory and it has 16GB of internal storage and this is the remainder. The Bluetooth version is 4.2 and that is represented by the 4 plus below here. Its CPU is the Amlogic S905Y2 which is a quad-core Cortex-A53 processor clocked at 1.8GHz configured in 32-bit mode with support for only 32-bit ABIs. What this means is that it can only run 32-bit applications. Its display is powered by the ARM Mali G31 graphics processor with OpenGL ES version 3.2 support. 
It has a dual band Wi-Fi connectivity and currently is connected to my 5 GHz Wi-Fi band. The operating system is Android 10 TV OS and it shows that the box is not rooted. Under devices, it shows that it has Vulkan support, which is quite surprising. And if you scroll down, you will see that it's Vulkan version 1.1. Under thermal information, they have disabled the temperature sensor, a common practice we are seeing in their recent models. Under codex, it comes with all of the decoders for the playback of 4K videos and videos with digital surround sound audio formats, and I can identify at least one decoder which is DTS HD. And that's it for its system and hardware information, and let's now quickly look at some benchmarks. First, its RAM copy speed and its internal storage read and write speeds. It has a RAM copy speed of 3133 megabytes per second. Its internal storage has a read speed of 73 megabytes per second and a write speed of 54. These scores are good scores, not bad at all for this TV stick. Next are the results of its dual Wi-Fi band speed test. The results show that on its 5 GHz band, it has maximum bandwidth and on the 2.4 GHz band, it achieved 31%. So if you have a network that's over 100 megabits per second, you should use the 5 GHz band to achieve maximum bandwidth. Next, I have the results of the Antutu benchmark. In this test, it scored 85,485. This is also a good score for the stick and should see to it that it places among some of the top boxes on my chart. Next are the results of the Geekbench 4 CPU benchmark, and in this test it scored 773 single core and 2228 multi core. This is another decent score for this TV stick. The final benchmark is the graphics benchmark, and the app shows that it has Vulkan support, and that qualifies it for the iStorm Extreme test, the Slingshot test, and the Slingshot Extreme test. And the results show that it got 6,015 in the Ice Storm Extreme test, 584 in the Slingshot test, and 373 in the Ice Storm Extreme test with Vulcan support. In my opinion, even though this TV stick is not designed for gaming, these scores indicate that it could handle some Android games really well. And that's it for the benchmarks. Let's now see where all these scores places it on the rankings chart. And the scores are in, and the results are quite startling because the Mikul KD1 is at position 18. And from what I'm seeing on this chart in reference to Antutu benchmark scores, is that the KD1 managed to outperform every Amlogic S905X3 TV box in this list, along with the Dynalink model and the Google Chromecast. Now, this result makes me a bit uneasy because I've seen another YouTuber state that this TV stick has low performance. So I'm being cautious and I'll wait till the end of my review to make any final pronouncements. So for the time being, I will now move on to its entertainment features. You can view this chart on my website in a full spreadsheet format where you can compare the top TV boxes and their various scores along with price comparison links. See the link in the description below this video. So as I proceed, the Mikul KD1 does not come rooted as this is one of the requirements to be fully Google certified along with Google Widevine Level 1 and HDCP 2.2 protection. This sets the environment for premium services to play in HD and 4K. However, not all premium services will achieve that resolution, especially if additional certification is required by the service provider. For example, Netflix requires that a box has its ESN certification for it to show in HD and 4K, and the KD1 does not have that certification. So whilst it's Google certified and has the required DRM, Netflix will only show in BC quality. And I also see that the same applies to Amazon Prime Video as it's not available on the Google Play Store. Other services that come pre-installed such as Disney Plus and Sling TV may play in HD and 4K, but I can't know for sure because I don't have a subscription with these services. Those who have high bandwidth internet speed and like to watch YouTube in high definition, the Android TV version can play up to 4K 2160p and in HDR quality on this stick.
the Mi Cool KD1 comes with Google Assistant's feature and built-in Chromecast. Using the included wireless voice remote, I will first test its Google Assistant's feature. 2000 MHz equals how many gigahertz? 2000 MHz is equivalent to 2 times 10 to the 6 kilohertz. Let's try that again. 2000 MHz equals how many gigahertz? 2000 MHz is equivalent to 2 gigahertz. What's the weather in Texas? Right now in Houston, it's 39 degrees and mostly cloudy. Today, it'll be cloudy, with a forecast high of 39 and a low of 26. Due to current wind conditions, it feels like it's 31. U.S. Coronavirus Statistics Here are the latest numbers of confirmed coronavirus disease cases and deaths in the United States of America. According to the New York Times, as of the 17th of February, there were 27,873,039 cases, 490,326 deaths. So the Google Assistant's feature works perfectly. I will now test its built-in Google Chromecast feature. I was able to mirror my mobile phone to the stick using Miracast and I got the official Chromecast feature to work with YouTube. You may have observed that I've been using a mouse pointer to navigate during this video and might be wondering how is this possible if the KD1 does not have any additional USB ports. To achieve this, I'm using a micro USB to USB adapter that allows me to power the stick and at the same time use USB devices such as air mouse and external storage devices. However, you can only use one USB device at a time. So if you intend to use shared internal storage using a flash drive, you would have to use the voice remote or a Bluetooth air mouse to navigate the stick. I attempted to format a 32GB flash drive to shared internal storage and was unsuccessful. So it appears that similar to the Dynalink model, it's limited to under 16GB. A link to this adapter on Amazon can be found in the description below this video. In addition to using a mouse pointer, you can totally transform its interface and install an alternative launcher. On a regular Android, I would usually recommend the ADW Launcher 2. However, for Android TV OS, I have now come to enjoy the use of the EV Launcher as it's most compatible and has features such as long-click menu pop-ups, drag and drop shortcuts, and even custom wallpapers. However, you do not get the option to use live wallpapers. You will have to sideload this alternative launcher using Aptoid or APK Pure as it's not available on the Android TV OS version of the Play Store. Using the micro USB adapter, I will now play my list of 4K HDR videos from my flash drive using the VLC player.
win for Barca would be enough because it would give them the same. Adriano shoots. It's a typical Adriano shot. Oh, what a tremendous goal! One nil to Barcelona. Alexis Sanchez. Awesome. The video is played smoothly and in high quality. The HDR display is always on by default, so we don't need these videos to tell us if the box has HDR display. So I've now connected the KD1 to my 7.1 audio receiver in HDMI pass-through configuration and I'll now test for Dolby and DTS surround sound audio formats. Dolby Atmos, the world's first object-based cinematic audio, with powerful moving audio that transcends from channels to moving around you with pinpoint accuracy. Executioners, judges. Welcome to the inside of your head. So this test confirms that the KD-1 has Dolby Atmos, DTS-X, HD Master Audio, Dolby Surround and THX. It didn't produce Dolby True HD. I will now connect my gamepad via Bluetooth and play some Android games to test its graphics rendering performance with Vulkan support and the gamepad key mapping capability. I cannot check for overheating because they have disabled the temperature sensor. Oh 
open sesame. So the game is played okay. The graphics was of a high quality and I got the Octopus Game Pal key mapping app to work. You are however limited to what games you can play on the stick as some high graphics games tend to crash due to insufficient resources. In summary, the Mikul KD1 is indeed a powerful TV stick, surprisingly more powerful than all the Amlogic S905X3 TV boxes on my list which is somewhat mind-boggling and not to mention that it has Vulcan support. It strives to deliver an alternative to models such as the Fire TV Stick, the Dynalink model and the TiVo Stream 4K. While it's up there in that category and runs on a certified version of Android TV OS, it suffers from the lack of required certification for Netflix and Amazon Prime Video to play in HD and 4K. This brings to an end my review of the Mikul KD1 Android TV Stick. I secured a 10% discount coupon from the developers of Mikul where you can purchase it directly from their website and I've also researched the best prices around the web. The link to their website where you can use the 10% coupon and the other price comparison links can be found using the link in the description below this video. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed the presentation and the information was of value. Your likes help with the popularity, ratings and support this channel directly so thank you in advance. If you are new to my channel, be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell before leaving to be notified via email when I release new videos or decide to do a giveaway. Keep the streaming community alive and I'll be seeing you in the next one.